One of the most important features of Langchain is its ability to connect your AI applications to external data sources. And if you have a look at the document loader section in the Langchain documentation, you will find a massive library of integrations. And this includes anything from CSV files to PDF documents, websites, databases, and many, many more. But you might be wondering why this is necessary in the first place. Large language models like the GPT models can only accurately answer questions based on the data that it was trained on. And this means that if you ask it questions about recent events like news, the weather, etc., it won't know the answer or even worse, it will hallucinate an answer. And another example of why you would want to use this is to allow the model to only answer questions about your business or services. So in this video, I will show you how you can use a document loader to scrape data from a web page and the model will then be able to answer questions by using the knowledge on that page. And more specifically, we'll scrape this page about the Langchain expression language. Because we will be scraping information from a web page, we will be using this web-based loader. But you can use what you learn in this video to add your own document loader. For example, if you wanted to fetch information from a PDF document, a Word document, a CSV file, or pretty much whatever you want. In our project, be sure to activate your virtual environment and then let's create a new file and let's call it retrievalchain.py. Just a note, this is the fourth video in this series, so I will expect you to know how to create a basic chain at this point and use prompt templates. You can also find the source code in a GitHub repo that you can find in the description of this video. So let's start by setting up our basic model with a prompt template. First, let's import the OpenAI API key from our environment variables. Then let's import chat OpenAI then let's also import chat prompt template from langchaincore.prompts. Let's also instantiate our model by setting model equal to chat OpenAI. Let's also pass in a few parameters. Let's set the model equal to GPT 3.5 Turbo 1106, which at the time of recording is the latest GPT 3.5 model. And let's also set the temperature to a low value like 0.4. And the reason for this is the closer to zero we get, the more factual the responses will be. And because we want the model to answer questions from a data source, we don't want it to be too creative. Let's also create our prompt by setting prompt equal to chat prompt template dot. I'll simply use the from templates method. And let's set our prompt value as answer the user's question. And let's also create a placeholder for the question by using curly braces. And let's use a value of input. Lastly, let's create our chain by setting chain equal to prompt. And let's pipe in the model. Then let's invoke our chain and we can pass in our input variable. And let's simply say hello, just to test this out. We can also assign this to a response variable and then let's print response. Let's go ahead and run this in the terminal just to see if this is working. And indeed, we get our response back. Right, now let's have a look at how we can retrieve data from a data source and then somehow feed that into this chain. I think the best way to explain this process is with this diagram. The first step is to fetch data from a data source using a document loader. And that is what we'll do next. The document loader will then store the contents of this data source in what is known as a Langchain document. Let's implement these two steps now before moving on with this diagram. So as I mentioned at the start of this video, we will be using a document loader to fetch data from a web page. I think before we move on, let me first explain the problem that we have and then conceptually how we'll solve that problem. Let's replace hello with something like what is LCEL? -E and the answer that I would expect is something like Langchain expression language. But when we run this, we do get a very random answer. So one solution is to provide some context to the model that will tell it what LCEL stands for. We can do that by simply enhancing the prompt. So in the prompt, we could add a section for context, and then we can provide this information in the context. So I'll actually go in and copy this entire paragraph and pass it into the context like so. And now when we run the script, we do get the correct answer back. 
Now, obviously, we don't want to hard code this context, but instead populate this dynamically. And we can do that in Langchain by injecting documents into this prompt. So let's have a look at what a document is and then how we can use it to improve this context. Let's import something from Langchain. So from Langchain core dot documents, import document. And let's simply create a document at the top of this code by typing doc a is equal to document and a document takes in two very important parameters the page content which is simply the string value as well as an optional parameter called metadata this is useful for storing additional information about that text like the source that it was fetched from like the website url let's pass in our page content and for this i'm actually going to cut the string value from the prompt and then add that to our document instead and if we wanted to we could create multiple documents that could provide context to our model but let's stick with one document for now as i'm simply trying to demonstrate the point now in our prompt let's provide a placeholder called context instead and now when we call our chain we can now also provide context and this can be an array of values and let's pass in document a into this list in the terminal let's run this again and indeed we do get the correct response back however there's actually a special kind of chain that we can use instead and that is called the create stuff document chain i'll explain what this is in a second but let's start by importing that special chain from langchain dot chains dot combine documents import the create stuff documents chain this name does sound quite odd but it's actually quite simple the create stuff documents chain is pretty much identical to this and it still allows us to create a chain with a prompt a model and an output parser with one additional feature it will also allow us to pass a list of documents into the chain so we can create our chain using this function and for the LLM, we will specify our model. And for the prompt, we will also specify our prompt. And optionally, you can also specify your output parser. And if we run this in the terminal, we still get our correct response back. I know this might seem a little bit confusing because the behavior between these two definitions of the chain are identical. But once we start implementing our retrieval from the data source, we will need this create stuff documents chain in order to complete this process. So as a rule of thumb, if you are planning on using retrieval, simply create your chain using this create stuff documents chain. Now let's move on to the fun part. We can already go ahead and delete this document A from here. Let's also delete this sample document and we can also delete the document import. I simply wanted to demonstrate what a document looks like in Langchain and how it can be used. Let's import our document loader from Langchain community dot document loaders. Let's import the web base loader. In order to keep this code nice and clean, I'm going to wrap this logic in a function. Let's call it get documents from web. And we can assume that this function will take in a URL as input and let's instantiate our document loader by setting a variable called loader equal to web base loader and this takes in the URL as input. So this class will scrape the data from our web page and it will then add the content of that page to a Langchain document. So let's create a variable called docs and let's set that equal to loader dot load and then let's simply return docs let's test this function by running print get documents from web and i'm going to copy this url and if you are following along feel free to use any url that you'd like let's run the script and see what we get back so in the terminal we get this list back with a document object and within document the page content property now contains all the content of that web page and what i also want to show you is what's contained in this metadata property here we can see the source which is the url the title of the page the description of the page and some other metadata as well so now that we have the results from the web page as a Langchain document i can simply assign this to a variable called docs and because this is a list we can simply replace this 
with docs. And if we run this code again, it will still work. But this time, we are dynamically fetching the information from an external data source and then passing that into our model as context. However, there is one issue with the solution. This will work, but the length of this text is quite long. And this is a relatively small web page. And it's important to note that all LLMs have some sort of token limit. And if we simply inject the entire web page into this context, we could very easily exceed that limit. And furthermore, with the OpenAI models and other service providers, we are charged for our token usage. So it's important to keep this context as small as possible. So if we look at this page, when I ask a question about LCEL, we ideally only need this section or maybe even just a small part of the section in the context to answer that question. Or if I ask questions about streaming support, it's only this section that we really need. So the solution is to take all of this text and to chunk it up into smaller parts. And if we look at our diagram, that is the next step of this process. At the moment, we have one very big document, but now we want to chunk this up into smaller documents. Let's go ahead and do that. So back in our get documents from web function, we will take this docs list and split the content of this doc up into smaller docs. We can do that by using a text splitter. So from langchain dot text splitter, let's import the recursive character text splitter. Now, just above the return docs, let's instantiate our splitter. Let's set that equal to the recursive character text splitter. Then let's create a new variable called split docs. Let's set that equal to splitter dot split documents. And let's pass in our list of documents like so. And let's return split docs instead. And let's also print out the length of split documents. Let's test this in the terminal. And at the moment, we still only get one document back. And that is because the default value for this recursive character text splitter is huge. So our document is actually not being split. We can fix that by passing in a parameter called chunk size. Let's set that equal to 200 characters as an example. We can also specify a chunk overlap. Let's just make that 20 characters. And let's run this again in the terminal. And this time we get 22 smaller documents back. And of course our answer is still correct. However, we are not done yet. At the moment, we are passing in all 22 documents into the context, which is still not what we want. We need some way of only selecting the most relevant of these documents. Let's say the top two or three documents that is relevant for answering our question and then only inject those documents into the context. Now, in order for us to be able to fetch the most relevant documents, we need to be able to perform what is called a semantic or similarity search. And we can use a vector database to do that. A vector database is just a special kind of database that we will use to store our documents. And that database then provides a function that we can call where we will pass in our user's query and the database will only return the most relevant documents back. And we will do that in this retrieval section over here. But at the moment, our documents are in a lang chain format, which contains the metadata and the page content. But we first need to convert these documents into a format that the database will understand. And that is where this embedding function comes in. The embedding function will simply take our content and convert it into vectors. And it is that vector representation that will be stored in the database. Don't worry, this will all make sense in a second. Let's first focus on this embeddings function over here. And this could not be any easier. I'm just going to remove this print statement from here. And then at the top of our code, let's import this embedding function from langchain underscore openai import openai embeddings. Do take note that different providers might have different embedding requirements. So for OpenAI, we will use this OpenAI embeddings function. Then let's create a new function that will be responsible for creating this vector database. So let's create a function. Let's call it create vector. And in this function, let's instantiate that embeddings function. I will simply call it embedding. 
which is equal to OpenAI embeddings. And believe it or not, but that is all we have to do for the embedding step. When we create this database, we also want to pass in the list of documents because we will be storing those documents in the database after all. Now let's focus on creating this database and storing our documents in this database. I do want to mention that Langchain offers support for a massive amount of vector stores, but in this video, we will simply use an in-memory data store. But if you wanted to store your documents in a permanent database, you can just go through this list of providers. So in order to create our database, let's import from Langchain community dot vector stores f-a-i-s-s and let's import f-a-i-s-s like so in our create vector function let's now create our vector store by creating a variable called vector store which is equal to f-a-i-s-s dot and we want to create this database from our documents so this method takes in our documents as input and for the second parameter, we need to provide our embedding function, like so. And that is all we have to do to create our database with data. Let's simply return our vector store. And let's rename this function to something like create db instead. So now we can call this function create db. Let's also pass in docs. And let's assign this to a variable called vector store like so. Let's simply run this code to make sure that everything is working and everything seems good. Cool. So now that we've fetched our data from a data source and loaded that data into a vector store, all that's left to do is to retrieve the most relevant documents from our vector store and then inject that into our chain. So in the spirit of keeping this code clean, let's create a new function called create chain and we'll pass our vector store into this as a parameter and then let's simply copy all the code from model we'll also grab the prompt and let's also create the logic where we create the chain and let's cut that and let's add it to our create chain function and let's also fix this indentation and this looks good and then in this create chain function let's simply return chain like so then below vector store, let's create a variable called chain, which is equal to create chain. And we'll pass our vector store into this as a parameter. Awesome. Now let's have a look at what we need to do to get these most relevant documents and then inject them into our chain. So we have our model, we have our prompt, and we've created our create stuff documents chain. So now it makes sense for us to retrieve the most relevant documents from the vector store. And that is very easy to do. Let's create a new variable called retriever. Let's set that equal to our vector store and on our vector stores, there is a method called as retriever. We can now use this retriever function to pass in a query and it will fetch the most relevant documents from the vector store. Now, all we have to do to create this retrieval chain is to combine our docs chain with this retriever. And to do that, Langchain provides a special function that we can use. So let's import that as well. So from langchain.chains import create retrieval chain and then below retriever let's create our retrieval chain i'll just call it retrieval chain is equal to create retrieval chain and this takes in our retriever as the first parameter and for the second parameter we need to pass in a combined docs chain and this is why we used that create stuff documents chain earlier. So let's simply pass in our chain as input. And now we can simply return the retrieval chain instead. And one important thing to note about this retrieval chain is that we no longer have to manually pass in the context like so, but instead the retriever will fetch the most relevant documents from the vector store and then automatically pass in those documents into a context variable in the prompt. It is therefore also important important to call this variable context in your prompt template. You will receive error messages otherwise. So let's go ahead and test this in the terminal. This retrieval chain 
will actually return quite a few things. It will return to you the input that we passed in. It will also tell you how the context was constructed. And we can see the documents that were fetched from the vector store. And finally, we can see a property called answer, which contains the final answer for this prompt. So if we just wanted to see the answer, we could simply write out this answer property in the dictionary instead. And let's see what we get in the terminal. And now we only receive the answer. I do want to mention one important parameter for this as retriever function that most of you will be interested in. I believe this will return the top five most relevant documents. But if you wanted to increase or decrease that number, you can simply pass in the search keyword arguments property with a k value of whatever the amount should be. Let's simply make it one. And instead of the answer, let's write out context and let's run this in the terminal. And we can see that we only receive one document back from the retriever. In the next video, we will have a look at adding chat history to this chain to create a chatbot-like feel.